Even climate change deniers should be having a tough time defending their arguments with everything that's going on these days. As our climate change continues to heat up and the effects of that warning grow more and more frequent and severe, farmers and farming communities around the world will all be increasingly challenged. What we need to remember though is that agriculture contributes to climate change as much as it's affected by it. How the process of food provisioning contributed to climate change. Food is a basic human need and a healthy diet is a key part of our health and our overall well-being. An increasingly globalized system of production and delivery has developed over time to meet the growing need for food and variety. Today, a fish that was caught in the Atlantic can be served within a matter of days in a restaurant all the way in Prague, alongside a side of rice imported from India. Before these products are transported all over the world and onto our plates, they are produced, stored, processed, packaged, transported, and prepared. Now, you probably didn't pay close attention to the complexity of the process when you were digging into your food, but don't worry, we're here to remind you. At every stage of food provisioning, greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere. Farming, in particular, releases a significant amount of methane and nitrous oxide, two of the most powerful greenhouse gases. Methane is produced by livestock during digestion as a result of enteric fermentation and it's released via flatulence. It also escapes from stored manure and organic waste in landfills. Nitrous oxide emissions, on the other hand, are the indirect product of organic and mineral nitrogen fertilizers. Statistical changes because of dramatic changes in global food demand and production. According to a report from 2012, agriculture accounted for approximately 10% percent of total greenhouse gas emissions in the e EU. Uh, this is a pretty drastic increase from the 24 percent that was recorded between 1990 and 2012. The reduced numbers could be attributed to a decline in livestock numbers, maybe better manure management, and a more efficient way of applying fertilizers. The rest of the world wasn't as fortunate. Between 2001 and 2011, global emissions from crop and livestock production increased by 14 percent, primarily as a consequence of increasing total agricultural production in developing countries. This was driven by a rising global demand for food and a shift in food consumption patterns because of rising incomes. During this period, emissions from enteric fermentation also increased by 11%, accounting for 39% of the agricultural sector's total greenhouse gas output, steps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. We all know that food occupies a pretty important place in each of our lives. Further reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture, therefore, is gonna be challenging. Regardless, when there's a will, there's a way. With better integration of innovative techniques into the production method, Methods, like capturing methane from manure and using fertilizers more efficiently, or increasing efficiency when it comes to meat and dairy production by reducing emissions per unit of food, we can make a big difference. Alongside efficiency gains, changes can be made on the consumption side of things as well. Meat and dairy products have the highest global footprint of carbon, water, and raw materials per kilogram of any food. Looking at greenhouse gas emissions, livestock, and fodder production generate over 3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent individually. That's right, that's a total of of 6 billion tons of carbon dioxide to worry about. Moving on to post-farm transport and processing, this accounts for only a tiny fraction of the emissions linked to food. But changes can be made in this area as well. No step is too small. How climate change affects agriculture. It's a cycle. Our agricultural techniques adversely affect climate change, which in turn has a negative impact on agriculture. Crops need suitable soil, water, sunlight, and heat to grow and thrive. With increasing global temperatures, the length of the growing seasons has been affected. Flowering and harvest dates for cereal crops crops have shifted, and these changes are expected to continue all over the world. So let's take Europe for an example. In Northern Europe, agricultural productivity might actually increase because of a prolonged growing season. This might also allow new crops to be cultivated. The story is drastically different in Southern Europe, however. Here, extreme heat events and a drastic decrease in rainfall and water availability are predicted to hamper crop productivity. Crop yields are also expected to vary from year to year because of extreme weather events, which also contribute to other factors like pests and diseases. In the Mediterranean region, because of extreme levels of heat and insufficient water during the summer months, a lot of summer crops might need to be cultivated in the winter instead. Temperature changes and changes in growing seasons also have a serious effect on the proliferation of some species like insects, invasive weeds, and diseases, all of which directly affect crop yields. And part of these losses can be offset through farming practices like crop rotation to match water availability, adjusting sowing dates to rainfall and temperature patterns, and using crop varieties that are better suited to new conditions. It's not just land-based food sources that are affected by climate change. The distribution of fish stocks, for example, are also significantly affected. Along with increased maritime shipping, warmer water temperatures can facilitate the establishment of invasive marine species, resulting in the subsequent collapse of local fish stocks. How factory farming is polluting water supplies. According to reports from 2017, toxins from factory farm runoff had resulted in the largest dead zone in U.S. history in the Gulf of Mexico. At over 8,000 square miles, no marine life could survive because of 
toxic fertilizer pollution from intensive animal agricultural facilities. In the same year, environmental group Might Earth also released a report that pointed to Tyson Foods, one of the country's largest chicken producers, as a major contributor to this pollution crisis because of their dumping of toxic pollutants into the country's waterways. Additionally, toxins from factory farms also contaminate drinking water. The Environmental Working Group discovered that systems supplying drinking water to over 200 million Americans contain dangerously high levels of nitrates from fertilizer pollution, which has been directly linked to the increased risk of developing certain kinds of cancers. Unfortunately, but inevitably, the communities that are most commonly impacted by this type of pollution are low-income communities and communities of color. So, we find that the environmental impact of agriculture is also a critical environmental justice issue, one that's often overlooked by the government. How factory farming is polluting the land and the air. It's not just water that the farming is destroying, it's our air too. Most meat and dairy companies make a profit off of not publishing their climate emissions, making it difficult to know the exact amount of greenhouse gas they're generating. But data from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States were able to estimate that the top 20 meat and dairy companies emitted more greenhouse gases in 2016 than all of Germany, which is Europe's highest polluter, by the way. So what does that mean exactly? Essentially, if the companies were to form their own country, they would be the world's seventh largest contributor of greenhouse gases, dealing with the global market and global warming. The global demand for food is predicted to increase by 70% in the coming decades. So how are we going to meet this increase in global demand while also reducing impacts of food production and consumption on the environment? Is that even possible? We know that reducing the amount of food production isn't a solution that's going to work. Any reduction in key staples is going to jeopardize food security and make it difficult for many groups around the world to access affordable and nutritious food. So unless you're suggesting that vulnerable populations should starve, this doesn't seem to be the most viable solution. Producing more food out of the land that is already used for agriculture is another proposed solution. However, this requires a much heavier use of nitrogen-based fertilizers, which release nitrous oxide emissions that further contribute to climate change. Intensive agriculture and fertilizer use are also result in the release of nitrates into the soil and nearby water bodies. This might not be directly linked to climate change, but high concentrations of nutrients do cause eutrophication, which promotes algae growth and depletes oxygen within water. This has disastrous consequences for marine life and water quality. Yet another solution has been suggested is converting forested areas into agricultural land. But, again, always with the buts, this process is also a source of greenhouse gas emissions. Like many other land use changes, deforestation is also bad for biodiversity, and further undermines nature's ability to cope with the effects of climate change. How can we help? Our consumption habits are killing us and our planet, but by cutting back on the amount of meat we consume, we might just be able to turn the tide. Meat reduction and shifting to more sustainable practices could potentially end industrial farming practices that are harmful for humans and cruel for the animals involved. Thankfully, a global shift away from factory farmed meat is definitely underway. This move toward plant-based eating might just create a better future for all of us. Well, that's a wrap for today, guys. Would you consider making the switch to a more plant-based diet? Let us know all your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you next time, guys. Later.